Okay, so welcome back. Uh, troubleshooting phase has begun. I'm looking at the power supply because that's always a good place to start. And I started the amp up with the dim bulb limiter and uh, the dim bulb for initially went off the chart. It wasn't a dim bulb, it was a super bright bulb. I pulled out all the power tubes and significantly better. Not so much current drain. I don't have a watt meter and all that fancy stuff, so I have nothing to, to show for that. But I just wanted to go through and have a look at the voltages. So here is the schematic with all the voltages on it. And what I discovered is this 44 volts over here. It comes off of the transformer through this 3.9K resistor, which is fine, and it gets to this OA81 germanium diode. This germanium diode is apparently not healthy. I'm going to test it now. But this 50 microfarad capacitor here, remember I showed you a capacitor that looked a little bit dodgy to me. Well, I'll show you now how dodgy. Look in the top there. I've got a light here. Hang on. Let me just bring the light in. Now, I've seen dodgy in my time. And that's dodgy. So that capacitor is going to come out. And I think that might be the first stage of my fault fight finding. So hang on. Let's see where this goes. Okay, radio friends. I have replaced the diode. Uh, where's my pointer? Let's get in here. Diode replaced. And the capacitor. Now, on the schematic, it shows this capacitor. Where is the schematic here? I uh, moved you. Sorry. It shows there's the diode. There's the capacitor. And it says, says 44 volts. What it neglects to tell you is it's minus 44 volts. See the open part of this uh, symbol for the capacitor shows positive to ground so it's actually a negative 44 volts which makes sense that's why I was getting such a high heat on those tubes is because they started conducting full power so here we have now minus 46 which is to be expected uh, I've got a better diode in and I've got 230 volts coming in, even though the dim bulb limiter is probably pulling it down a little bit. That's minus 47 volts, so I'm happy with that voltage now. Now this capacitor over here, you can see it's got a little bubbles. So I would say this guy's also on its way out. Which tells me that my future probably contains the replacement of all these electrolytics which is not a lot of fun because these are kind of hard to get at I've managed to do a nice solder job on the the diode and the, uh, the after much solder sucking because I don't have a desoldering station but at least now I'm starting to see voltages well not all of them that's 1.5 volts which is kind of strange but I'm starting to see voltages that I can believe put it that way so I'm going to continue with that now and see where this takes me. Alright, so with some further testing, there are other voltages that need to be taken care of, and I suspect we have more deteriorated capacitors. So, I'm going to do that off camera. There's a lot of fault finding to be done here, and I'm not crazy about making big, long videos. Uh, I don't have the patience. It's not that I think it's a bad idea. I just, yeah, I... I I get more involved in the troubleshooting than in the video making. But I like to kind of document what's going on. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.